Welcome to Tiny Epics. Today we're going to look at a painting called The Anger of Achilles, which was completed by the artist Jacques-Louis David in 1819. The title of the artwork calls our attention first to Achilles, the greatest of all the Greek warriors. He's seen here at the precise moment he begins to draw his sword. The man he's glaring at, the reason for his anger, is Agamemnon, king of Mycenae and commander of the Greeks during the Trojan War. In the middle of this heated scene stands Agamemnon's wife, Queen Clytemnestra, and their daughter Iphigenia. So why is Achilles reaching for his sword, and why is the mood so tense? This is supposed to be a wedding, after all. Well, kind of. Let me explain. According to the tragedian Euripides, Agamemnon has invited his wife and daughter to come visit him and his Greek fleet before they set sail for Troy. He tells his wife that their daughter is to be married to Achilles, and she and Iphigenia happily make their way to the camp. Not long after they arrive, however, there's a major and horrific plot twist, as it becomes clear that the wedding plan was all just a ruse devised by Agamemnon to lure his daughter to the camp so that he and his men can offer her up as a human sacrifice to the goddess Artemis. You see, Agamemnon had recently offended the goddess by hunting and killing one of her sacred stags, and so she retaliates by preventing the Greek troops from reaching Troy unless Agamemnon offers up his daughter as sacrifice. His restless troops who fear the gods and are anxious to get to Troy also demand her sacrifice. The mood of the wedding party, of course, turns quickly sour once the terrible discovery is made. Iphigenia is seized with panic and desperately pleads for her life, telling her father, don't kill me before my time. It's sweet to look upon the light. Don't force me to look at the things beneath the earth. He responds by saying, it's Greece for which I must sacrifice you, whether I want to or not. We are all less important than this. Clytemnestra is in shock and desperately tries to reason with her husband. When that doesn't work, her rage takes over. She hurls insults at him and finally, begs him not to murder their child by saying to Agamemnon, don't, in the God's name, don't make me become wicked toward you. We'll later see in an upcoming episode just what she means with this ominous line. Clytemnestra tells her daughter, oh, my child, I cannot bear the pain of your death. Your father hands you over to Hades and runs away. Clytemnestra does everything in her power to save her daughter's life. She begs for Achilles' help, and together they plot against Agamemnon to save Iphigenia. It's easy to convince Achilles because he's fallen in love with Iphigenia, and is appalled that he was used unknowingly as a lure to bring the girl to the camp in the first place. He suddenly realizes that he really wishes to marry Iphigenia, but her father will put an end to the romance before it can even begin. This is the cause of his anger towards Agamemnon. He wants to act, and yet he's also aware that killing the king likely won't save Iphigenia anyway, as the entire Greek army is on the side of Agamemnon. Achilles hesitates for a split second before drawing his sword to kill him, and decides against it. Clytemnestra realizing that all hope is gone, looks on helplessly with tears in her eyes. Iphigenia, meanwhile, seeing no way out and not willing to put Achilles' life at risk, finally proclaims to her mother and Achilles that her sacrifice is for the good of Greece. It's as if she's suddenly been brainwashed, as she tells her mother, it's more important for one single man to look upon the light than a thousand women. With everything going on around her, it also just seems that she's desperate to put an end to the conflict. As she obediently walks to the altar to be killed, she utters these last lines to herself. Farewell, torch-bearing day, light of Zeus. I will inhabit another time, another place, another life. Farewell from me, sweet light of the sun. 
If you want to find out what happens next, be sure you're subscribed to the channel. There are plenty of other videos in my Greek mythology playlist to keep you busy in the meantime. Ephradistopoli, thank you so much for watching.